Hi everyone, welcome to the Investec Minds podcast where we explore the opportunities and the challenges facing uh, South Africa's economy with leading experts within the bank. Today we are looking at the crucial topic of savings with none other than Renee Grobla, the head of cash investments at Investec. Renee, thanks so much for joining the podcast. Thank you, Fifi. It's lovely to be here. Perhaps just reflect on what you are seeing right now in terms of the current savings culture of South Africans? Um, sadly, it's not good news. Um, I think, you know, we've we've known for a long time that South African households are under strain. Mm -hmm. As it comes out in most polls, when we ask why are people not saving enough, it, it's really, I can't save. Mm -hmm. I don't have the means to save. But maybe just to get back to your question um, around households and what we're seeing at the moment, the average South African is actually in more debt than we would expect. Okay. So 62% of after-tax disposable income at the moment is going towards debt. So that means South Africans are indebted and, and very often it means that they are spending more on lifestyle uh, than they can afford. Sure. Um, and the savings numbers are showing us that South African households as contributing to the national savings is actually at a minus number. So they are dissavers not even saving at the moment. But we do know that this government is trying to create or reverse some of the um, ills of mm. our savings culture and the introduction of the two-part system, particularly to ensure that a lot more South Africans are able to have money when they retire, which is not presently the case. Yes. Just your views on the, the two-part and whether you reckon it's a net benefit. So I think um, the proof will be in the pudding. Mm -hmm. um, for me, if I, if I think about what we're trying to achieve, if all goes according to plan, it, it's a net positive. Mm. We, we're trying to ensure that people are saving for retirement and that there's a portion of the savings that remains accessible only for that. Um, you know, under the new two-pot system, one third of your retirement savings will be uh, available for emergency savings use. Um, and I think it was also geared to the fact that if you think about South Africans, we, the, the statistic that's quoted at the moment is only 6% of South Africans can retire comfortably sure. and only 50% have a retirement plan. Mm. Um, and that's a little scary. Very. So I think the intention is really good of the two-pot system because what we have seen behaviorally is that, um, you know, and this is not just a recent thing, but in the past, because of the way that our retirement regime works, um, the only way that you could access your retirement funds before retirement was really if you left your employment. Mm. So people who've been in dire straits or really desperate, um, who didn't have emergency savings other than their retirement money would quit their jobs in order to access the money. And the reality about that is now you're sitting in a double negative because now you don't have an income because you've sure. quit your job. A lot of people didn't have a, a plan in terms of the next employment then, but they were desperate because they needed the money for whatever the case may be. Um, so I think the system will eliminate that kind of poor financial decision making mm. to to go down that route. But what it does mean is people really need to understand the impact of taking that money. And I think they estimate, you know, if uh, if the legislation, which still needs to be 100% passed into law, you know, if it comes into place in September as intended, between the fourth quarter um, of this year and the first quarter of next year, there could be 40 billion rand um, coming into that sort of available pot. Mm -hmm. um, and if everybody takes that money... The withdrawal pot. The withdrawal pot, mm -hmm. yes. If everybody takes that money, what what is the impact, right? And what are they taking it for? Are for they going to take it for emergency spending because it's going back into spending right mm. but or are they going to be what are they going to be doing with that money you know these things are difficult because with the best intentions you can help one side of the equation which is immediate need but you can hurt the you know the other side of the equation which is your future retirement so i think really again for individuals to start thinking about this and saying yes i can solve my immediate problem but i'm I could be creating uh, a problem for myself in the future. And, you know, on that note, I really do feel that if you can access a financial advisor, which is more accessible than most people would think, mm -hmm. um, you know, it really is helpful. If you don't have the knowledge or the confidence around finances and you're not able to find the right 
pieces of information, really to get a financial advisor to help you will, will really, really assist you in this journey of making the right financial decisions for you and your family. It's all of our responsibilities from us as individuals to the government, as well as the companies to ensure that we do improve the savings culture here in South Africa. But Renee, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast, particularly in the month of July, being Savings Month here in South Africa. Thank you very much, Fifi.